BC Rail first started as the Pacific Great Eastern Railway, or PGE, in 1912, later bought by the Canadian government in 1918. It was mocked for many years, being called the line that ran from nowhere to nowhere. Later on, it became known as the British Columbia Railway in 1972, followed by the further abbreviation of BC Rail in the 80s. BC Rail units have been part of the CN roster since 2004, when CN purchased the BC Rail line. Since then, the units have run all over the CN system, still retaining their reporting mark of BCOL. Many rail fans have made it their quest to catch these units in action. Today, we will look at some BC Rail units I've seen on the CN Three Hill subdivision. We begin in Three Hills, Alberta, where CN Q114 is heading north, cresting the grade between Twinning and Three Hills. SD 75I 5674 was leading this afternoon. The second unit is BC Rail 4610, a 840CMU, and they had that GE engine wide open for this climb. Q114 is a daily intermodal train on the Three Hills and Camaro subdivisions. 114 operates its route between Calgary, Alberta and Toronto, Ontario. Bright and early on a Sunday morning in May, we pulled up to the crossing at Equity to catch a southbound heard a few minutes prior. He came around the corner around 10 minutes later, but instead of a typical crossing whistle, he gave me what I believe is called a shave and a haircut horn show. I soon figured out the train I was staring at was CNQ-115, a priority intermodal from out east. He wasn't all that big today, as the defect detector soon clarified. CN detector, three hills, five, seven, no alarms, temperature one, eight, C, total axle, five, zero, two, speed, two, two. 502 axles puts him at around 121 cars long, give or take. There was a Q114 sitting in the siding at Perks, so we moved to a crossing south of Three Hills on Range Road 240. We got ahead of 115 and caught him again at this crossing as well. After Q115 cleared the south end switch at Perks, Q114 was on his way over. I thought he was just going to have ordinary CN power, but to my surprise he had a BC Rail Cowl 4624 in third place. It was behind an SD70M-2 and CN C40-8M Cowl.
This is one of my favorite spots to film trains on the CN Three Hill subdivision. It seems no matter where you stand at this crossing, you get an excellent view of a train, whether it be a northbound or a southbound. Since it was a Sunday and 114 was the only train on the Three Hill sub from here to Mirror, we decided to give chase. Here is Q114 passing through Troshu, Alberta, the next town north of Three Hills. The grain elevator here was built by Alberta Wheat Pool in 1973. To my knowledge, it is no longer in service, though it makes a good background when filming trains. We then leapfrogged ahead and caught him south of Lucana at crossing on Township Road 370. In the spring and summer, this crossing is quite scenic and a nice photo location on the Three Hills Sub. The only downside is the hundreds of mosquitoes the train kicks up as it goes by. I'd like to point out this green IBT boxcar it's an early 50-foot high-cube boxcar, originally owned by the International Bridge and Terminal Company, which is the predecessor to the current owner, Minnesota, Dakota and Western. I love the history behind some of these old cars. You never know what you'll find when trackside. One fourteen was now moving at around 50 miles per hour. I just barely caught him at this crossing on Highway 21 between Delburn and Ardley, Alberta. I had no time to even set up the tripod for this shot. This was the last time I saw Q114 that day. It made for a fun chase nevertheless. A few days later, I found myself trying to get a good shot of this Q115 as it headed south through Three Hills. It was around 9 o'clock a.m. We beat 115 to a crossing just south of Three Hills. He had two SD70M 2s, sandwiching CN2522, a GEC44 9 WL. As cool as it was to see Q115 this morning, 
It wasn't the train I was after. The one I wanted was at Equity. There it is, CN G819 was at the Equity Elevator, and his power was by the south entrance. This was the return of BC Rail 4624, seen on 114 a few days prior. It was sitting here with SD70I 5614. Forty six twenty four was built in nineteen ninety three by General Electric. These locomotives are a little odd because they go by a few names, the most common of which is Cowl, named for the fully enclosed Cowl body. Another common one is Draper Tapers, named for the indented panels behind the cab designed to help the crew see behind them when reversing. Another one that's not as common is French Toasters named for the paint scheme resemblance of the French flag and the amount of smoke these engines put out when they're working. In addition to their nicknames, these engines also have two different identifications, C40-8Ms and 840 cmus but most people just call them cowls. Notice the two sets of ditch lights on the front of 4624. This was a distinct BC Rail feature. The top ones were called rock lights, the lower ones were just called ditch lights. Both sets were angled inwards to cross each other's beams and they were used to provide better night vision around curves. Someone must have known what I wanted to see, because while I was foaming over the close-up shots of that cowl, someone started it up. This was the first time I've seen a cowl start up in person. Listen to that 4,000 horsepower, four-stroke engine slowly roar to life. When 4624 was up and running, then 5614 began to start. The first time I've seen an SD70i start up in person as well. I watched the units for a few more minutes, but then I had to go. I had some places to be. Unfortunately, I never saw him leave. 4624 was leading that day, and I would have killed to catch it. Oh well, you can't catch them all, I guess. Fairly recently, I was on my way home from a trip to Calgary when I saw a train sitting in the siding at Perks. We stopped and waited for the opposing train to show up. While I was waiting, I got to listen to the crews talk about cars. In this case, Acura versus Honda. I guess waiting in sidings gets boring. But though, like if you want, if you want like the hands-free lift gate, you gotta friggin you got to get the Platinum Elite level, and if you want cooled seats, it only comes in the A-spec. And then if you want heated seats, you got to get the Elite. It's like, Jesus Christ, like, why can't they just... But then if you go to the Honda one, it has everything. Right? Like, it doesn't make any sense why you got to spend the 60000 to get the heated seats. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 
Pretty soon, CNA442 rounded the corner. BC Rail Cowell 4614 was the second of three units on 442 today. 4614 has definitely seen better days. It was a pretty average meet. The conductor of the opposing train in the siding got out and made sure that 442's train was in good working order as it rolled by. These flat cars with new Caterpillar vehicles on them were an added bonus for this train. I think these are being delivered to Calgary to add to the never-ending road construction fleet we all know and hate, but I'm not certain. After A442 passed, the train in the siding got ready to leave. I went to this bridge between Perks and Three Hills seen from Highway 582. Track Foreman Bigelow was the first to cross the bridge. These were his working limits between Perks and Equity. Bigelow's uh, authorized 193 CN8819 through the remainder. Terry work limits, mile, six, uh, mile 64, 64 to mile 66 on 307, no restrictions, correct? Soon after, our train came through. I soon found out that this train was CNQ193, a train that typically consists of intermodal stack cars and auto racks. CNQ193 is an intermodal and auto rack train that can originate in CN Sarcy Yard in Calgary, Alberta. It then goes to Prince Rupert, British Columbia, where it terminates. It has an opposite direction sister train that bears the symbol Q192. Today, 193 had a little mix in the middle of his train. Here is CNQ143 rolling north through Three Hills. This is an older video that I shot on a summer evening in 2018. A BC Rail C44-9W, number 4646, 
was the third unit in this lashup. BC Rail units are slowly dying off the CN roster due to their age. These units have served a long career for both the British Columbia Railway and now the Canadian National Railway. Like all things, they too must come to an end. And while I was editing this video, I learned that CN has started to put all of their GE cowls into storage, CN and BC Rail alike. That is why we rail fans should photograph and video them while we still can. This is a perfect example of how the trains of today might not be around tomorrow, so we shouldn't take them for granted. Thanks for watching this video on BC Rail Units. Hopefully you learned something, and if you've got any further questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. I try to reply to all my comments the best I can. Until next time, take care train fans and I'll see you soon.